Hi, I'm Mick from MDC. Today we're going to talk about the XT15 HR, HR meaning hard roof. So let's have a look at your van. To start our journey, we're going to talk about things that you do before you come and turn up to us and pick up your van. One is make sure that you've got a brake controller in your car. The brake controller will assist you in a, uh, your brakes on your van. Okay? With that, you need a 12 pin plug, which has got the bottom seven exactly the same as a normal flat seven. All right? But we have another wire going to the number 12 pin, which gives you power for your um, breakaway system. The other thing is your 50 amp Anderson plug, so that's 5 0. And some plugs. So that's going to help you with your charging of your batteries. So you've got a full battery system when you get to where you're going. Also, guys, you need to remove the tow ball off your car. Now, as I say in that, your tongue needs to look like this when you turn up. Okay, so ball off. Okay, so we can attach our receiver that goes on the DO35 or polyblock, whichever, so therefore we can get you on the road. On hooking up from your, your van to your car, guys, we have a DO35 hitch. All the same on the XT range, okay? So basically, it's just the pin that goes underneath it. Basically, once you're over the top, with the jockey wheel, you wind down as far as it goes, as in like, once the jockey wheel becomes loose, all ball weight is here, push the red button. That means it's locked on, okay? So once this button is pushed and this little arc comes forward, that means it's locked on. To get it off, push the button down, push that back, release the button, and you open up the throat, and then you wind the jockey wheel off. But we're, we're hooking up at the moment, so button down, and then 12 pin plug, plug that in just there, secure it. Your Anderson plug, 50 amp, charging of the batteries, plug that in, and then chain. By law, you have to cross the chains, okay? So it's a, it does a support roll for anything should happen. Okay, once you cross your chains, what it does, it acts as a cradle. So if anything should fail here, it falls into a cradle, so it supports the towing of the van. Obviously, you'll know it's coming off. Instead of if the chains were um, straight up and down to there, what it could happen is it could dig in, essentially flip on the car, and that's what we don't want. All right, so hence why you've got to cross your chains. Also, breakaway unit. Now, this must be attached to your chassis not to your chains, all right? Has to be to the chassis of your car. So, easiest part on this car is around this bar that's here. If your van comes detached from the car, this, your breakaway unit, on this wire, it pulls out, okay? And then it activates the electric brakes that are in there. So the brake comes on so it doesn't career around the road or anything. Comes on until you can push that back in, resets everything. And then jockey wheel up. So pull the pin, swing it up, make sure those pins go back in through here, handle up, handbrake off. You're done, you're ready to go. On your jockey wheel here, guys, every time you're taking it off from the car, be it camping, at home, whatever, what I would suggest is have the wheel running crossways across your van, not vertical with the van, but crossways the van seems to support your A-frame a lot better. But also, when you're reversing on, if you miss it a little bit, you're able to move on the wheel itself, not move the whole jockey wheel. So you're moving on the wheel first. So for safety reasons and so forth, and that, make sure you're, you're having your jockey wheel run across your van. On all your caravans, guys, you have four stabilizers, okay? Two at the front, two at the rear. All right, easy is take a bit of pressure off, pull the handle, pull them down so it's nice and vertical. Get your wind down bar, pop it in there, wind her out. Now, remembering that this is a stabilizing unit for your van, this is not a jack. This is not a jacking point, all right? Your jacking points are here, all right, just in front of that. Basically, if you did get a flat tire and so forth, put these down for safety reasons, but these are stabilizers and stabilizers only for your van.
when you're hooking up your gas, check your O-ring, just make sure it's all perfect. Put it in the space provided. Once you've got the proper seal on there, you'll go cook up the directions of your kitchen and then you'll come and turn on the gas. On your XT15HR, on the rear right, so the driver's side rear, is where your filling points are for your water. You've got the first one here is your grey water and then filling points here um, are for your fresh water, your fresh water tanks that you run here. When you want to be filling your tanks up, I want you to go out and buy some food grade hose. Everything underneath the, um, the van is all food grade. The poly tanks, the hoses, they're all food grade. So filling it up, do not use your garden hose. Go out to Bunnings and buy some food grade hose. But what I will tell you to do is make sure when you do open your water up, just stick your finger in there, just so it gives you a guide of how many mil hose you have to buy. So just make sure that you work out what you've got on your van so you can go buy the appropriate hose for that van. When you go to the grey water, it's a flushing point. Okay, so you want smells gone and such, put the hose in there and flush it out. Just below it, just down here, there's a tap. You just make sure you turn that on and the grey water comes out. All tanks have got bungs on them, all right, so you can clean the tanks out themselves at all times. Okay, so mains water pressure, you get two adaptions you can buy, a Nylex or Nita products out three quarter inch American thread, pop that in there. All right, so you can attach two mains water on this one just here. Another little feature is a tap on the front end. You know, if you need to wash your hands, the little ones that have got dirty fingers or whatever, want to wash their hands. Once you've got your water pump on or plugged into mains water, right, this becomes activated. All right, so as simple as just turn and tap. On the XT15, just in front, over the wheel, wheel arch, is basically the external shower. So you've got an internal one, this is your external one. So key in, in here, you've got hot and cold. So once the hot, your um, trim hot water system is on, you can use hot and cold, all right? So and basically you just can sit on that little pivot there. And this one here, that's your flow for your water, how much you want it coming out at any time. And when you're putting your external shower away, just wrap it around the, the tap handles and that, and just place it in there. Just hold it in place, bring that up, lock it away. All right, so the next compartment along in the XT15, towards the front of the van, it's got two black knobs on it. Basically, it is just storage. So ample space in there for a lot of things. If it's night time, you need to have a look at something, you got a little touch light here. So you can just light up what's in there, so you can find it, turn it back off when you don't need it. On the passenger side, the first compartment in here, when you open it up, is a tunnel boot. Obviously, whatever fits through the first hole here, you can pack anything in there. Just watch what you put in there, just make sure you don't overdo your ball weight and such, but it's very spacious, you can put a lot of gear in there. I know even people have put surfboards in there. And this one, these ones have got touch lights in there as well. On your XT range, guys, through your door, this key here that's got the rounded edges and such, a big silver one, you usually got two big silver ones, this one is your door. Okay, so unlocking your door, key in, turn to the front, handle to the front, opens it up. On this particular model as well, when you do lock it, it's key in, handle to the back, turn it to the back, key back, it's locked. When you want to be locking it from inside, internally, the little silver knob that's here, just turn it, it's locked. Also, when you want to open the door from the inside, because you've got to move the door handle to the front, right? It's up the inside. Don't pull it down because you're just locking it again. Up and open. When you want to separate your door, there's a little black lever here. You push up, it unlocks it, and the door's separated. When you want to click it back together, you grab the top, click, bottom, click, it's all back together. And this is how you bring your step in and out. Lock it in place, slowly pick it back up and just push it underneath the van. Simple. Another feature on the XT15HR, on your left hand side, basically above the wheel arch, is your TV entertainment box. Your TV bracket, 12 volt and 10 amp uh, plugs there. In your entertainment box, you've got an aerial plug. Now this is not hooked up. If you want to, you can get a wine guard aerial. So then you've got 
aerial which is um, utilised by this. Other than that, you could just get a TV uh, with a DVD player and plug that in there and run your DVDs. On all your vans, guys, you have recovery points. Now, these, these recovery points are rated to three and three quarter tonne. All right, so therefore, basically, what you've got to do is unhook from your car and hook up to these for safety purposes, because some good Samaritan might come up behind you, want to drag you out, and these can actually get ripped out because you're trying to snatch too much out of there. All right, so basically, unhook from your car, recovery points, we'll pull you out, not a problem. On your XT15HR, on the rear passenger side, which is the left side of your van, right where you'll find your toilet, it's a Dometic toilet. Now it's very much similar to the XT16s, right, but it's slightly different because we've got a different locking mechanism on this. This one, it's got the big black key, put that in, turn, pops out, just read this lock, and it's the same toilet as the 16s. On your toilet cartridge, it's actually linked to your water tank underneath the van. This one um, draws its water from your own tanks. Um, to take it out, there's a little green lever under here. Flick that up, unlocks it, and you drag it out. And obviously, it's got wheels on. Push the button, extend the handle, and go for a walk, empty your container. When you push this button in, it just relieves the pressure. So you can, when you tip it upside down, you can empty all your wastewater. Once you get to your dump point, undo that, and obviously tip it upside down to uh, empty all the cart um, cartridge full of waste. All right, put that back on. And again, put it back, lock it off. There's a little sensor up top. You've got to make sure that connects to make sure all functions inside work properly. Also in your toilet cartridge, it's, it's considered to be black water. So you must dump it in the appropriate places, okay guys? So locking your toilet lock, basically when you push it in, just clip it at the bottom, push in and turn the key, put out, it's locked. The second compartment here with the black, big black knob, basically open that up, is your external kitchen. And it's got a little fridge slide in behind it. So basically with the two blue tabs, Pop them down, slide it out. Again, right at the end, if it doesn't lock into place, just give it a little yank at the end, it locks into place. On here, you have a three burner Dometic stove at the front here, so a nice three burner there. And also at the front, the two little blue tabs on the inside is your sink. All right, and so hot and cold running water when you plumb it in down there. Basically, you've got ample room at the back here to throw at least a 60 Evercool, 60 angle and such this extension for your kitchen. Basically, once you stand it out, put the leg in there and find the hole. So once you get it in there, just raise it a little bit, do the black knob up so it's got support. When you're hooking up your water, guys, basically what you do is two um, compressor outlets down here, under here. All right, you just attach those. Obviously, red and blue, hot and cold. You come over here to your caps, you take them off and you plug your cold in. You plug your hot in. That's it, done, you hooked up the water. Then, then you've got to go into your cabinet and make sure your water pump's turned on, water pressure will get to here. You open this up, and your hot and cold water will be coming out of this little bad boy here. Gas bayonet. When you push it in, turn to the right. Once you plug that in, go to the gas ball at the front, and then turn it on. For your Dometic three burner, it's basically 12 volt um, start, just pop that through that same gas line and up to the 12 volt that's in here. And then you've got your spark. Obviously, you still got to be, have it turned on inside. Once you are connected, push the knob in, turn to the flame, hit your button. Once it's lit, hold it on for about five seconds, then just release. Step back, make sure you start cooking your steaks. When packing up your kitchen, you're going to make sure all gas water lines are unplugged. Put them back in their rifle place just beside the, uh, your fridge. Leave it go for at least half an hour before you close the lid. Obviously heat comes through so it doesn't shatter or crack. And also um, your 12 volt for this, just unplug it and just leave it in behind here. And then push your kitchen away.
When you do slide it away, make sure she locks into place so your kitchen is secured so you don't have it rattling around inside your little box there. Your button to open and close, that's okay, just here on the, the rear side of it. Open, push the button, and she starts coming out. When it's coming out, if any wind is hitting you in the face, be safety conscious and just hold your awning. Okay, because what you don't want is a massive gust coming and ripping this clean off your um, caravan, all right? So two or three fingers on here. You don't have to have any pressure on it, all right? It's just there just in case. And while you're all holding onto it, guys, what you don't have to do is you don't have to run over and hit the kill, um, stop button. When it gets out to a certain point, it will stop automatically. So retrieving your legs. Pop one end, slide your hand along, pop the other end straight down and I find it the easiest way is to stay on the inside of it okay undo that you can use that as a slide to slide it out all right extend it down to here the bottom goes in slip that back down and once you get to the desired level the inside one you just tighten her up and lock her into place with your electric awning you've got two options for your legs okay so when you do pop it off if you do not want to go back to the van, undo, straight down, you peg it to the ground. These two little duvalackies, all right? One is your manual override for electric awning, all right? And this is your adjusting tool. So basically, if you pull out these wires or something happens where you can't use the electrics on your electric awning, this is your manual override. Basically, it just goes up inside here, and you wind this. And then if something did happen, it comes in wrong, if it gets thrown about on the wind or something, this is your manual override for your adjusting tool. And they sit side by side, like that, up inside the cradle in here. Okay, obviously guys, you've got to unpeg. You loosen off here, that slides back up. All right, have your right hand up here as you're pushing that in as you swing it up. So it slips in there. Make sure that this is square here, so it folds in nice and flush. Pop that lid, all right, it comes out. You slide that up, you lock it off, swing that up. Make sure that that's flat at that end, clips in. And then you come over here, you got open and close, so therefore you just push the button close and it comes in. On the XT15HR, your control panel is in next to the bed here. Your kill switch is under the dinette, but turning things on and off, you've got to turn it on. Uh, so toilet, outlet, hot water system, um, water pump, so forth, you got to turn them on. For some reason, if it's not working, turn it off, hit the fuse twice to reset above, it's still not working, and then you go to your other options as your master uh, switches, the RC unit. So, there's a process you've got to go through if thing, things aren't working. Just in this compartment as well, you've got your voltmeter and your amps. Obviously, amps are what draws, volts are what you got. So with that volts, um, just make sure at any present time you never drop below 12.2. Okay, so 12.2 is your cutoff point where you need to um, charge your van up. You're at 40%, you're endangering to losing your AGM batteries. They're not a battery where you can run them dry and bring them back. You may get away with it once or twice, but you won't get away with it the third time. So it's very important that you must maintain your batteries at all times. So therefore you've got to come and check them at all times. Your power source on the outside of your van is 15 amp. So when you get a 15 amp lead, you can plug it into the front. So you got 240 in. That comes in handy, one, if you want to top up your batteries. And two, if you've got aircon, you have to be running on at least a three kVA or 240 and don't forget when you're plugged in here it's only when those uh, 10 amp poles inside that they come alive also when you're plugged into 240 guys don't have your um, extension cord coiled really tight it's got to have a little bit of space about it so meter meter and a half as in loop wise the rcd units will trip out and such but so long loops now whilst at home if you haven't got a 15 amp at home and you need to charge it, go to Bunnings and buy yourself an adapter. 
it's called an amphibian adapter from 10 to 15 because you must maintain your batteries in your van. Okay, with any electrical problems guys, what you need to do is come in and check your RCD unit. All right, see if it's tripped out. So if any faults come through, come and check this little unit first. In your XT15 HR, where you'll find all your electrics is under the seat, the dinette, the closest to the shower. And in here you've got two batteries, a thousand watt modified inverter, your 240 um, projector charger, and you've got your DC to DC charger in there as well. Just in here as well, you've got uh, your mains or your, your cutoff switch. All right, so just in there, so you can turn that off and you can turn that back on through there. And also you've got mega switches, all right, if anything trips out, you know, come have a look at them. Or your RCD unit is above the door when you walk in, so you can see if that's been tripped out. So there's a few things in here, there's infusers and such that you must check if anything's gone wrong with your electrics. Okay, so your 240 charger, obviously here you've got a switch that turns it on. And this is where you can relate to. It goes through your battery type and so forth. Just at the top there, it's all calcium, gel, AGM, and so and wet battery. So therefore, if you do want to change out your batteries, you get onto that setting. So basically, you can choose what's going on in there. Your IDC25, DC, DC charger, obviously that relates to solar and so forth. Charging light, that'll be green. That means it's working, and it's working off the solar, and then also if it goes to the alternator, which is off your car. Okay, so if that flash is red, you mean, you know, there's a little bit of a problem. If it's flashing green at the top, you know she's working fine. And obviously, your 1,000 watt modified inverter, you gotta turn that on when you need to, when you want to use it, because what the inverter does, it converts all your battery energy to 240 energy. That's why you've got to plug into here. That's why in any van, if you've got 10 amp poles inside, basically they do not come alive until you're plugged into 240. This changes the 12 volt to 240 so you can plug things in. So this is a thousand watt modified. So basically anything that you want to run, you check on the back of any unit. If it runs more than a thousand watts, well, you can't use it. If it's under that, you're going to be fine. You also have a master switch here. Um, if that little lever there is popped out like that, that means things are, have tripped out. You pop that back up. All right, that's one of your master switches. And also you've got all these circuits where um, positive and negative come onto there. Um, there's a little button on the inside of here, so that's how you reset everything, okay? So you just push that button back in just to make sure it's all working fine. And the XT15, just uh, and your dinette, just above one of the, the headboards here, is basically your remote for your projector unit. Now, that only becomes live when you're plugged into 240. If you're only just running your battery system, that doesn't come live, all right? It will show you how much battery power you get, but you can't change anything from the dials. Just to hear the, the, the dinette, basically you've got 10 amp um, plugs here. And again, they only come live when you're plugged into 240. Just beside that, you've got a 12 volt and USB. So again, you can be just plugged in and charge a couple of things, your phone or whichever, uh, through this way, and that's through your battery system. So uh, if you want to do any of that, you can just do it through that. In your 1000 watt modified inverter, you must check the back of your appliances, what you want to plug into it. Because what your inverter does, it converts all your 12 volt from your battery system to 240. All right, so you got to turn that on. And it will do that, all right? But if you have something that's around 900 or 1000, all right, sometimes, because it's modified, it will go like that. And if it's on the downward spike, it'll may trip out. All right, so you just gotta be careful what you plug in. But anything that you wanna plug in, you gotta make sure that it's under a thousand, all right? Also, if you do turn your inverter on, you must turn it off at the end of it because what it does, it keeps chewing your battery system up because it's converting the 12 to 240 constantly while it's turned on. So it's doing what you've asked it to do. So once you finish using it, turn it off every time. When you come into the van to your right, there's your burner, oven, sink, drainer, and then it goes to the toilet, shower, comes around to a, a trifold table, and then your bed. So you've got a Dometic three burner at the top, Basically push the knob in, turn it for the gas. Obviously the gas has got to be turned on at the front. Ignite, 
gas will come on, leave it on there for at least five to 10 seconds, let go and it'll stay lit. In your Thetford burner, there's also an oven. So therefore, when you've got a little baking tray and stuff in here, little handle on there so you don't get burnt when you pop that in there. When you are cooking inside, you must remove this, okay? So that's gotta come off when you are cooking inside. Obviously, when you, before you go on your journeys, you pop it back on, but when you are cooking inside, you're supposed to take that pad off, all right? Ventilation. You've got an exhaust fan, all right, to activate it and such, all right? Above that, your stereo, your water gauge, cabinetry above that, and sink. A nice deep sink here. But then just underneath that, you have a little 55 litre Dometic fridge. So with your fridge in your XT15, okay? So it's got a little handle there, you pop that up, and it opens up, all right? But just at the top of there, there's a little lock. If it's to that side, that means it's locked here. Don't break it, don't force it. Undo it so the little knob is facing to the front of the van. Undo, open up. All right, don't force things if it's not gonna work. All right, so you close that back off. On the XT15, one of the features is you have a tri-fold table. All right, so it folds out from the wall. So just on this side, there's a bungee cord. So basically bungee cord just helps it from bouncing around when you go on corrugations and that. So undo that, sit down here, unfold that, and bang. Trifold table. When you want to put it away, basically just crack that, push it back over there. You have a bungee cord on this end, you slash it back over the top, done. Just under your trifold table as well, there's a couple of compartments in here. So just for little stuff, you know, you might put a uh, deck of cards in there, a little board game. So when you do see so home, maybe in clement weather, you want to pull a table out, play some cards, have some, have some chips, a couple of beers, wine, whatever. But it's a nice little compartment. Put a couple of little board games or you know, cards or etc. in there. Just on the dinette as well, basically you've got your little extended for your feet. Uh, so you can kick back, relax, extend your feet. Maybe an important game coming on the TV, turn the TV around, have your beer, your peanuts, sweet. Just make sure you don't have anyone sit on these footrests, all right? When you want to pop them away, there's just underneath there's, there's two pins, you push up, it releases, then you pop them back down. So with your dinette, the ones closest to the door, basically is your Truma hot water system in there. With your Truma hot water system, make sure it's turned on in here, your gas is turned on in the front, and then just hit the button, Make sure it ignites, and then 15 minutes before you've got hot water. If the red light comes on, you just got to reset. Okay, wait 20 seconds, then have another go at it. If it still doesn't work after two, three, or four goes, you may have to take your, your, your burner inside or external, light them so you may have to purge the gas through the system to make sure it stays lit, because you might have one or two air blockages in there. Once you've turned your Truma hot water system on inside, this is your exhaust. Open this up. Now it shows you how to take this off. Basically push your thumbs in, it splits the top, it comes off. So you must release this as soon as you turn your hot water system on. So once you've lit your hot water system and you've taken your cover off, what I would ask you to do guys, is basically come and check it at two minutes and eight minutes. Come and check with the back of your hands if heat's coming out, all good. If it's not coming out, redo it. Because basically with the lines that aren't purged properly, it'll light because an air block in behind it, it's gonna go out. So you might have to go and do it two or three or four times. So the air, um, air comes out of it and the gas comes through the lines. At the rear of your van on the XT15, um, your toilet is on the left-hand side, so the, uh, the passenger side of your um, caravan. And on the right-hand side is your shower. And behind that, you got mirror and basin in here. So brushing your teeth and so forth. So everything from here, as in sink and shower and such, it's already pumped to your grey water tank. The toilet here is a Dometic toilet, like I said, it, it feeds from your own water. Um, the centre button here is your flush button. If any one of these red lights are lit up, basically it's telling you one, your cartridge is not put in, in properly, um, one, the water level is down low on your tank, and then it'll tell you the other two red lights of when, um, how, what level of water 
you have in the disposing unit. On your XT15, you do get a full reverse cycle uh, aircon. It comes with the unit, but you must be plugged into 240 for it to work. All right, so and also you've got a couple of fans up the, up the front, uh, Sirocco fans each side of the bed. All right, so if you want to circulate a little bit more, you can have them turned on as well at the same time. And your 15HR, there is ample storage in here. This is the way you use it, okay? There's hanging space for the ladies if you want some dresses up front and so forth, but ample storage around around the whole van itself. It's just the way you pack things. With the internal windows, guys, it's got little gray buttons there. You must push that button in and move the handle. Push the button in and move the handle. Please don't just yank on it because you'll break the internal lock, all right? The window itself goes out to three positions, all right? Once you hear the click, stop. You go too far, you release it, it'll come back in. All right, so therefore we go out to, see that? I released it. Once you feel the click, stop. I wanna release it, bring it back in, all right? You'll hear that click. Well, you know it's locked back into place. Also, when you close and guys, there is two little latches in here where you can go into the center or go completely on the inside of it. All right, if you go into the center, it leaves a little gap for ventilation, all right? So at night time, if you want a little bit of air, fine, but when you're traveling, it's got to be on the inside one, the internal one, or else you're just gonna fill up with dust. Also, with your window, you have a fly screen. It comes down and you have a privacy screen that comes up which you can go half and half if you wish just click them together as such all right separate just go slowly don't be in a rush you're on holidays you don't need to be in a rush just push them away slowly that's all you need to do with your shower hatch guys what it is you got a little button on here turns the light on you got a little swivel so just turning off that opens up the hatch, you got a neutral switch in there, you've got an external fan that takes that out, or you've got a one that blows in, all right? So you can just have it any way you want. Above your main sleeping area, you have a hatch in your roof. Basically, it's got the same tabs as the windows, but basically, you've still got a button, you've still got to push it on both sides. You've got a handle that swings down, and then you can open it up and push it up. There's only one setting, it's either opened or closed on this one. You have got privacy and also fly screen. You can do a 50-50 if you like. But what I will warn you against is when it's closed up and you're not using it, okay, and you have your blind across, what it does, it builds up a lot of heat, a lot of hot air in between the two surfaces. So what I will tell you to do is not have that closed up. I want to let the air come through, not with the hatch open, but so it circulates a little bit more. So you have a 40 degree day in between those two areas, it can go up to 70, 75 degrees, all right? So just make sure that that's open so that filtrates through so you don't get any warping of these two units. In each one of the vans, they come with a smoke alarm. So that's compulsory, you have to come with a smoke alarm, but it's up to you as the individual to make sure you change your batteries out. All right, so yes, it comes with a smoke alarm, but you have to change it out. It's placed in certain places in the roof. All right, each van is a different spot, but you'll have a smoke alarm in every van. Also in each van, guys, I mean, one of the drawers, there'll be a little booklet. All right, each booklet will contain whatever the van has got, be it hot water system, diesel, air cons, radios, blah, blah, blah. There's a little satchel here. It's got everything in there. So just have a read up of it. All right, and then if you need to, you go to your user's manual and you troubleshoot and so forth from there. On your caravans, guys, it doesn't really matter if it's a 12, 14, 15 or whichever, your tire pressures and your wheels and everything is all part about being maintenance, all right? So therefore, you've got to make sure you maintain everything. Each van has its own manual that you can download. So you can get the checklist off there and go through it. So therefore, you know what you've got to do at any particular time. 
KG wheel pressures, all right? I always say, whatever you're running on the end of your car, so it might be 40. You may have to go up to 45, you may have to go up to 50, 55, depending how you weigh your van. If there's too much weight in the back of it, you might have to up your pressures in your tyre. Basically, you just gotta maintain your tyre pressures at all time. You go on the beach, you drop them to a point. When you come back on the bitumen, you'll take it up, all right? Also, your wheel studs, 14 mil wheel studs, they're the biggest ones on the market. You've got to keep tension on them. We supply with wheel brace, so basically it's making sure it's taut, but not ridiculously like jumping on the wrench itself. So make sure it's tight, and you've got to check it uh, at 50, 150, 500. But also, you've got to check it every day once you're traveling. If you're going on corrugations for two or three or four days, you check it every morning. It's about a safety thing. On every one of the vans, you have a plaque on the drawbar that shows you how to do your wheel nuts up. So it's on a star pattern, okay? You don't go around any clockwise or clockwise, whichever. It's a star pattern, so it goes on evenly. Bearings, all right? If you do any salt water, beach work, anything like that, check them more regularly than 5,000, 10,000, okay? It's common sense on all of this maintenance through your vans. It doesn't matter if it's a 12 up to a 22 it's make sure you do the maintenance. On conclusion of your XT15HR, all I'd ask you to do is make sure you do the maintenance on the van at all times. Download your manuals, so therefore you can go through the leaflet and check on everything at all times. Teamwork at MDC helps you make your dream work, go out, make some memories with the family, escape with confidence.